Hey guys, things have been really crazy these last couple weeks. I can't believe how things can just change overnight. Anyways, I thought that since majority of us are staying at home or should be staying at home, this would be a good time to let's make some lemonade out of lemons. Um, I was in the process of doing like a mini renovation on my house, just updating with paint. Uh, um, you know, changing some of the countertops, and here comes my lucky. She's just barking in the room, but anyways. So, um, so anyway, so so right now I was in the process of painting my countertops. Sounds kind of weird, but yes, you can paint your countertops. So I was painting them to make them look like marks. It really was a really easy process, and um, it took me it. I, I, it took me a little bit longer because I painted it and then let it sit for a week or two. But it's something that you can literally do in a day, if not a weekend. So I just wanted to point out a few things that you definitely need. And this is this to do your countertop, depending on the size. In the, in my bathroom, which is where I did my bathroom and my son's bathroom, and it was six feet times two, twelve. Uh, I think it was, and actually it ended up being about ten square feet. And it would cost me about, let's say, $40. So these are the things you need. You're gonna need a paintbrush, whether it's new or been used. Uh, you're gonna need some paint. This is just acrylic paint from Walmart, 50 cents, whatever colors you want. Uh, I ended up using white and a, a gray color. You're gonna use a sponge as well. And you're gonna need something to feather and stipple the, the, the veining um, in the marble. Also need some type of uh, base, um, sorry, primer to prime your countertops. I used uh, primer one, two, three, as, as, as I'm, um, I think it's primer one, two, three. I'm showing it in the insert up above onto the right. You can use whatever you you choose. Then uh, take out the any caulking, existing caulking that you already have. So you could just re-caulk at the end. I did once. I let it sit for a few hours, about three, four hours. Then I went back it again to make sure to catch any um, any places where it was a little thin. So that way, if you by waiting a couple hours, you know that it's 100% dry. Okay guys, so here's day two. Uh, two coats of primer, the one, two, three primer. Really flat, I'm just making sure there was no, no blemishes or little extra pieces of uh, debris. Then now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start painting it. Here is the color. It needs to be stirred a bit. I just have these two different paint brushes from the from Michaels. I found this in my paint trunk in the garage, and that's just to kind of you. Well, I'll show you how to use that. Better be a bit of sponge, a paper towel, and a spray bottle. And what really helps is if. You grab a piece of marble or something that you want your countertop to look like. I just grab this at Lowe's and I'm just gonna use that as my guide. So I'm just dipping my paintbrush lightly and I'm just wanna start, uh, since I'm right-handed, I'm just gonna start in the right-hand corner. And you just kinda wanna Vary the depth, the, the, you want to vary how hard you press. Okay. I'm going to spray it with my spray bottle. Then I will, and you got to work fast because once it dries, it's harder to get off. And I'm just going to soften it up.
just like so. So it just looks very faint, just just like how a a real vein would look. So I'm just gonna continue that for the whole countertop. So I just did this little section over here, very faintly, you can see the veins. So I don't wanna really, I just want a very um, subtle effect. So all I did, I just practiced a little bit before I showed you, cause this is, um, I was a little nervous. So I'm gonna start a vein right here. I'm gonna join it down here. Right. I'm gonna stop right at the edge. Take my paintbrush, I mean, take my spray ball from about a foot away. I'm just gonna mist it lightly. Then I have my blending brush. And you can see how once I start blending, the line, it gets soft and you can brush. And that's okay, you want the vein to look faint. You want it to look realistic you don't want a really sharp line because you, you look at a piece of marble that's not the way it, it is it's a little it's subtle it's it blends in it it's um, her, um it shows a little bit more in some places and in other places <clears throat> it's um faint then i just take my paper towel blot it and there you go just blot it a little bit more so I'm just gonna do, you just do like one foot sections at a time and then continue doing it until I'm done. And then I'm gonna go back and do shadow veins, the, you know, the really, really, really faint veins in between. Hey guys, I'm back. So I'm almost done. I've been veining, stepping back, veining, stepping back, erasing. It did take me a little bit longer just because this is my first time and I wanted to make sure that I liked it. So right now I'm doing the backsplash. I did down here and all I did was continue the veins that started at the top and just extending them at the bottom. You wanna do those last just because obviously, actually I shouldn't even done them now because I'm still working on this backsplash up here and I don't wanna get paint on me, but it's pretty dry. So um, so we have a, a vein here and all I'm gonna do is just um, connect it. So we'll just start here, maybe more of an angle. and connect it down here. Same concept, I'm gonna spritz it. You don't wanna over spray because obviously you don't want too much, um, uh, you don't want too much runoff. I'm gonna use my brush to stipple it and feather it and make it more faint. And that's it. And then I use my um, my uh, 
paper towel and just dab it a bit. Just dab it lightly. And that's all you do. What you think? What you think? What you think? Okay, guys. So I am ready to epoxy my counter. This is what it looks like finished. And I've had it like this for like to be quite honest, a couple weeks because I wanted to make sure that I liked the way the lines looked. If I had to repair anything, which I I not repair but uh, redo, which I did because. I didn't like the way I did some of the lines. So I did that because once you do the epoxy, that's it. So anyways, this is what you're gonna need for the epoxy. Or you could probably do the polyurethane, but uh, from what I, from my research, the epoxy gives it a very hard glass-like um, solid surface. So I just went ahead and I bought it, so the epoxy. So I got this from Amazon, a half a gallon, uh, of each, uh, you need the hardener and the resin, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which I'll show you how to uh, mixing it shortly. You need something to mix it with, with this, just a paint stirrer. It's got to be clean. You want everything, obviously your your countertop and um, your surface to be 100% clean uh, of any residue, any anything. So you want to make sure that's clean, anyways, as well as your brush. <clears throat> um, I brought a roller, a foam roller. You don't want to use one with uh, with the little um, furry things on it because that might come off onto your resin. And you, I got some spreaders. Um, I think that's what they're called. But anyways, I got these from Home Depot or Lowe's. They're like $3 for a pack of three. You just need one. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. And you actually, you can use this or this. You don't need both. And my paintbrush, I have a paintbrush for the back, which is somewhere, I don't know, I'll find it. And then a mixing bowl, and you want one with um, with the measurements on the side. Basically, I'm not gonna use all of this resin for this surface, so, and you don't wanna over pour because once you, over, once you pour it, that's it, you can't save it. So anyway, so you wanna make sure that you adhere to the guidelines, that's, or the instructions, and pour it as per you know the size of your space and then the measuring tape just to measure cute right just to measure so you know exactly how much to pour follow whatever your the instructions that your epoxy states because each one is different like for example this one had said you should the room should be 72 to 85 degrees why because so once it starts hardening it's it was it's like think of a like a molasses you know when it comes out it's really hard but if you were to put it in the microwave it's really liquidy but when it goes hard it gets hard and, and it doesn't move as much that's like the consistency of epoxy so the warmer the room the better you don't want it too hot because it's going to be too runny but if you don't want it too cool because you're not going to be able to manipulate it so once you put, um, you determine the uh, dimensions that you, your, of your area, then you're gonna go to your instructions or directions rather, and it's gonna tell you exactly how much, how much of each um, liquid that you need to pour, to, to mix together. Don't eyeball it. This is not a time to, to be like, I think this is about right. No, you don't wanna do that. You has to be exact because if you have too little, then it's gonna go, if you don't have the formula right rather, um, it may dry too quickly and it may not dry at all. That's something that definitely could happen if you don't have your formula right. Then another tip to remember when you're doing your epoxy is once you mix them together, you're gonna stir it for about three minutes. You can put a timer on if you want. And again, this step is extremely important because you wanna make sure that both liquids, both blend it so that when they, you put it on your counter, then it's going to give you the look, that glass look that you want. Especially when you mix the two together, it might look a little cloudy. Once they st start mixing, it's gonna start looking clear. So once it's clear, that's your cue to, that's, it's good. I'm pouring, try to pour it in evenly. And then also leaving some for even also leaving some for the tops. So 
So all I'm doing is just spreading it out. another tip do your back splash and your sides first the first time I did it in my bathroom I didn't do that first so then you what I was constantly doing is leaning over and trying to do the back splash without getting um, without getting what I the surface I had already paint um, epoxy messed up so do your back splash your sides first common sense is not so common is it right Andrea so you want to do that first so once you're finished everything you've got your sides you've got your your backsplash and you have the side you know the front done um the front is a little tricky you know when paint uh starts dripping and it's off the off the edge that's what it's going to do with your epoxy as well so i was trying to uh, catch it with my brush and just wipe it away or at the end you can just get an exacto knife or some kind of razor or sandpaper and sand it away i'm not sure what i'm going to do because i did see that there was a few um drips drips that are hardened now once you have your epoxy down make sure there's no little pieces of hair because i did see some hair i use a little my, this brush to just dab it and take it off and <clears throat> also also, if you want have an extra pair of tweezers, you can use tweezers as well. Just don't use a paper towel or anything that can leave fuzz. So once you've surveyed your countertop to make sure everything is is a okay, you should be good to go. So wait about, wait about thirty minutes when everything starts settling, um, and just keep in mind that uh, the well this epoxy I got was self leveling, meaning. Um, once you pour it on even though it may not be even in every single area it's it's going to start leveling out and spreading out but you want to still at least give it as much try from the beginning while you're pouring it and spreading it making sure that it is as even and consistent as possible it's for it's for a, a better look but it is it was self-leveling so then i took my at the uh after i let it sit for about 30 minutes i took the heat gun and I looked for little bubbles that have popped up. And I simply took the heat gun and just zapped them, zapped them. Oh, that was kind of fun, except I wasn't paying attention. I think I turned my head for a second and one little section uh, got too much of heat. So it, it spread out the epoxy from that area. And because it had already started to settle and to form, it did not self level. So that's part of the reason why I had to redo the whole countertop and another part reason was because I did not do enough initially and there were some areas where it just was just too sparse and I didn't like the way it looked so it was a good learning um, curve for me a learning experience for me okay so here's the next day I actually did two coats um, and I still messed up a little bit right here I tried to there was a spot here that needed fixing I think I showed it in one of the previous clips and I put, I drizzled on the epoxy too late. So it was already starting to settle. So it didn't level out and spread. That reflection right here is mine. That's my, um, my light fixture thing. So that's what that is there. But if you can see here, and then one part right here, just remember, uh, if you can see, try and see. Oh, oh, there you go. You can see it better. The bubbles. This is an area where it needed a little bit more epoxy. I drizzled on a bit over here and I thought it would self-level, which it did, but I forgot to go back with my heat gun to get the bubbles out. I might file it down, sandpaper it down, this part and the other part at a later date. We'll see. If I have to redo the whole thing, absolutely not. Um, and then I'm, I'll put the caulking in probably later on. I don't know if I even have any. I'll have to jump. Now make sure, again... I, I know I said it earlier, but I, as I was editing the video and I was like, make sure you take off the painter's tape. I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to take off the painter's tape. I ran and it took me a bit to get it off. I used, I had to use a razor and a couple other things. 
and in my son's bathroom as well. But I didn't, I didn't freak out too much because I know this is all gonna be covered with caulking. So this is what it looks like. It's, 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 it's not fully cured, so that's why nothing is still on the countertop. The, um, I'm gonna wait for about at least seven days for it to be fully cured. It looks shiny, it looks, there's a couple, you know, it's not perfect, um, but it looks really good. Like, I'm just really picky visually, so there's things that I'll see that no one else will probably even notice. But other than that, it looks good. Now under here, you can see some of the drips right here where the, where the, the epoxy was dripping over the edge. Now my advice to you is if you can catch it as it's dripping, like come back every couple of minutes and just take your brush and, and, and wipe it away, that's the best thing to do. I'm gonna, I tried taking a razor to some of the area, areas. Um, I'm gonna get sandpaper and sand it down. It's not that noticeable, but again, I just want it, if I'm gonna do it, I wanna make sure it looks 100. See, there's, you can see it right here. Uh, right there. Now other than those couple tips, yeah, I, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm glad to have my bathroom back because I've been, well, half back, because <laughs> I've been dealing with this for a couple weeks now. It was really easy to do. And again, it cost me about $40. The primer was, I think, $10. These, I always have these around for my, my um, crafts to get them for a couple a couple dollars for a pack of five. Um, of course, your paint brushes and then your paint, which is, if you get them from Walmart, is 50 cents each. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, well, why would I use acrylic paint on my kitchen or in my bathroom? But you, just keep in mind, it doesn't really matter what paint you use because you're gonna be covering it with epoxy. So that's it. So that's going to be irrelevant. So you can go out and use something that's specific, specifically made for counters. But personally, I think it's a waste of money. I initially had purchased one that I found called Nuvo. I used it for my cabinets, which I'll show you in another video. And it was $80, $80. And okay, so if you're a person that just wants everything already pre-done for you, it's a little kit. It came with the primer, it came with a top coat, it came with the the paint, it came with everything. It came with rollers, um, a sponge, um, everything that you needed to, for the, your project, it comes with. But it was $80. And when I broke it down, I was like, it's just not worth it because I, I you know, I, can, I had a roller, I had paint brushes, I had tons of sponges. So I actually ended up returning it. Now, some people may just like the convenience of having everything in one kit. So that's something that you're gonna have to determine, but you don't feel like you have to get one that says specifically for counters. Um, oh, another thing, which I might do downstairs, you can actually add a little bit of glitter into the counters to make it look even more realistic. It might be cool to add it into the epoxy and mix it in when you're doing the epoxy mixing. I wonder what that would do. But the mine, you can do black. I, I wanted a white um, marble look. You could do black, you could do any color you want, but whatever your base coat is, whatever that primer is, that's gonna be your, your the, the overriding color on your project. So just keep that in mind as well. So again, since we're gonna be home um, and this is a cheap project to do, I thought I would post it. I'm not gonna start a new channel or anything. I'm just gonna post it under the same How Beautiful Mess. Um, it gives you something to do creatively to get your mind off of this doom and gloom of this virus, which is, you know, I'm not downplaying it at all, uh, but I've, I've watched so much. I have so many articles and been, have been sent so many articles. I know for me, I needed that creative outlet. I need something just to take my mind off of, off of everything that's going on, even for like a couple hours. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you do do it, let me know below and let me know how it worked out. And if you like my video, give it two thumbs up or give it one thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to Hot Beautiful Mess.